Wilson, number five. Coming to everyone live. We have a well, not live. Semi live. Recorded. Semi live. Yep. Live okay. at the moment. Yeah. So, episode five, right? The big number five. What are we talking about today, Yolita? Um, we will have wellness connected um, topics today, mm -hmm. anti-aging mm -hmm. and how to age gracefully. So, uh, you know, Something you know that I probably should think about, right? Yeah, I think I just had so. my 40th birthday. There you go. A couple go. Of weeks ago, I feel old. The big number right Four there. Four zero. Well, if you put in perspective, it's not a big number. But, you know, once you get to that, so to speak, mm -hmm. middle age, <laughs> someone told you, wow. you look like a middle aged guy. Guess I am middle aged then, right? Um, you know, you want to, and not just them, anytime. Like, right. actually, you should think in your 20s how do you gonna age gracefully mm -hmm. just because you're young you know doesn't mean you cannot sleep all night drink alcohol do drugs and hope that you'll have good health you know or not eat well consume a bunch of pharmaceuticals and all sorts of drink sugary sodas and whatever who knows whatever is mm -hmm. put into, you know, certain foods and um, things that we consume these days. We have to be careful and look at the ingredients. So that's one part, how to age gracefully. And I think that's kind of part of what we wanted to talk about first, which was uh, maintaining a, a healthy lifestyle, right? Starting from when you're young and maybe you're not thinking about it because you know, you can survive on less sleep, <laughs> you know? And um, I did that. I, know, I think, I, I think school, everybody yeah. did, you know, I, I definitely did, you know, staying out late, um, you know, not getting enough sleep. And not always for bad reasons, like right. studying. Yeah. Studying late, or know? traveling. Um, and thinking, oh, like, it's okay. I can yeah. go on like six hours, five hours of sleep. No, our mm -hmm. brain actually needs eight hours of sleep is ideal for most people. Mm -hmm. Yet there will be variations that some people can do with less or they need more for the most optimal day-to-day -day functioning. But you know, if you look at the average, it's eight hours uh, because that's when our brain repairs itself. Mm -hmm. And that's when we regain our energy. Um, some days we can go by a little bit less, but you want to make sure that you next day you can catch up because if you don't, uh, your, your health will catch up, your bad health will catch up with you. Mm -hmm. You'll crave more sugar. You'll be more tired. You'll want to consume more caffeine. You'll be more irritable. Your relationship will suffer because aging gracefully is also not just the health but also mental uh, stamina. That's like one of the other very important points is to being mentally well as mm -hmm. we age. Right. And trying to find that balanced diet too. Yeah. Keeping well, in mind, yeah. you know, plenty of fruits, vegetables, obviously. I think we could all probably eat more fruits and veggies, but also staying hydrated. I know when I was younger, I could go a lot longer without, you know, really drinking the proper amount of water, right? Um, and thinking that it's funny, I was, you know, when we were talking about this before, I was thinking that when I was in my 20s, or a lot of people are in their 20s, you think kind of the, the beverage of choice is, is alcohol, right? You know, you're, you're going out, you're having fun hanging out with your friends, drinking alcohol, and then you get into your 30s and you think that the 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 elixir of choice is coffee, <laughs> right? Right. You're getting older, you're working, you're drinking a lot of coffee. And then 
the, the adjective goes to when you get into your forties, you realize that the real drink of choice is actually water. <laughs> To or stay tea, hydrated. Yeah. Um, like, or like you could add a little bit lemon or mint mm -hmm. water if you hate like plain water. But yeah, but plain, but water with like no caffeines, no sugars, no um, any sort of artificial sweeteners is 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 really what we should be consuming uh, day to day. Which can uh, be hard. I mean, there's so many artificial sweeteners and everything. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Or, you know, you just uh, make herbal teas. In Europe, you know, it's kind of accepted like afternoon tea. Mm -hmm. Like in morning, yeah, maybe people also drink more coffee. But there are teas like evening tea, you know, bedtime tea. In U.S., people don't really do that. I didn't notice that much tea drinking here. It's more like, okay, maybe chocolate milk with cookies or like um, Before bed. some sodas, you know, yeah. or um, coffee pretty much kind of the main drinks of choice. I think for so long it was soda, you know, was yeah. the, the main drink of choice for so many people. And... Tea is because when your taste buds mm -hmm. get kind of hijacked by those sugary or artificial flavors, it's hard to mm -hmm. appreciate the tea, which is like, you know, obviously more subtle, acquired taste, more right. might be bland. But you can add honey, you can add lemon. Or just healthy. try different teas. I mean, there's so yeah. many <laughs> different types of teas. But I think what we're trying to get at is, you know, trying to, when you're young, is try to get into those healthy habits, yeah. right? To stay hydrated with tea, water, even, you know, if, if sometimes when I get tired of water, it's like, okay, try to find a healthy seltzer option. You know, sometimes you have to be careful with, with seltzer because there could be artificial sweeteners in there if you're not careful. Like aspartame especially. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like some of them mm -hmm. are less harmful. Like now they use like, I know, like monk fruit or like even, yeah. I don't know if stevia is not as bad as aspartame, you know. Yeah, a buddy of mine ones, actually but... just buys just unflavored soda water and then he'll just do a couple squeezes of like lemon That's wedges in it yeah. or you know orange or or if, some yeah. sort of sweetener not sweetener i guess like a natural fruit just to give it a little bit of a taste because sometimes it just gets boring <laughs> yeah and if you like right. the bubbles yeah you know yeah. the mineral waters like there's yeah. like saratoga mm -hmm. and other natural like spring waters that yeah. they can add bubbles to yeah. it but there's nothing else artificial in right. there right and you can squeeze some orange lemon right. lime yep even splash of some juice a little bit mm -hmm. and i think too one of the things that I've tried to always think about, even when I was younger, when maybe it's not as much of a concern, is, is, is staying active, right? Yeah. Trying to find that sport that you like, whether for me, I really like cycling. Um, it's something that I've done since a kid. Um, you know, some people are like, how can you get on a bike and ride for 20, 25, 30 miles? Doesn't it get boring? And, you know, for me personally, no, it doesn't get boring because either I'll, I'll, I'll think about what I have to do, think about, you know, projects that I'm working on or, um, you know, try to listen to some music with one headphone in. Don't you don't want and to cycle don't with both on, on, Don't ride on the both very headphones busy roads in. too. Um, and you obviously be careful when you're listening to music, but kind of getting into that zone out, um, almost meditate on the bike a little bit of just relaxing, getting some exercise, being outside, fresh air, um, seeing, especially now in Vermont, you know, it's, we're in the, what is it? October 14th. So kind of second week towards the end of foliage, but you know, now is a great time to be cycling outside or running. You know, I think Yolita, you, I think like running more than probably cycling I used to do a lot of running yeah well and it's also whatever you start doing you might not like it at the beginning as much but like in time you'll get better and better at it so you know you can start small like small hikes small runs mm -hmm. small bicycle rides right. and then 
also your muscles and your body and your mental capacity to accept it will become uh, better and more endure. You know, you'll build endurance. And, you know, like what comes to mind is like David Goggins, who says mm -hmm. all the limits are in your mind, you know, like you can do 100 push ups. It might take you a long time, but you can still do it. So you can do that 10 mile mm -hmm. walk, run. Uh, y you can do all these things, you know, if you put your mind to it. Yeah. Of course, I don't recommend just, just uh, copying David Hogg Hoggins and doing ultra marathon with no training, but uh, or something like that, you know, but you can start slow and I assure you it will get better. It, the lifting weight's the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it's like what we talked about on the last podcast of just getting out there, taking that first step, cycling that first mile and building up to it. And um, there was a famous cyclist that I, I mentioned in the last episode where he had you know mechanical breakdown during a race, another issue. He had five or six issues with his bike over the course of the, of the race. And then pretty much was at the end of the, the Peloton and everyone was like, you know, he's, he's done. He, he's, he's unfortunately not going to win. And he ended up winning that race. And at the end they interviewed him and, you know, they were like, what, what was the secret type deal? You know, what's your advice? And he, and he just said, keep pedaling. Yeah. And you yeah. know, that's sometimes I think about that when I'm cycling towards the end and I'm just like, you just got to keep pedaling, just keep pedaling. Yeah. Maybe it's going to take you an hour longer, but you know, you just got to keep pedaling. Yeah. Same thing with hiking. Just keep, keep one step ahead of the other, yeah. do somewhat challenging more hikes, you know? Yeah. And, um, the other thing, uh, for anti-aging is important to trying to keep your lean body mass mm -hmm. because also cancer is associated. The less lean body mass you have, the more likelihood also of getting cancer. That's why uh, I think that's uh, the visceral fat. Right? Yeah, like yeah. Um, well, any fat, mm -hmm. but uh, because unfortunately, cancer rates are higher people among yeah. those who are obese, yeah. uh, people that get acquired diabetes. You know, because mm -hmm. also it's a metabolic disease, mm -hmm. like cancer and other uh, diseases we tend to get at you know, as we age, which could be um, slowed down or prevented, you know, you won't prevent that 100%, no matter what you do, like the biggest athletes, they still get them. But it's uh, less likely that you'll get all based on statistics, you know, if you have more, if you have lean body mass, so that means you're active, exercising, you're eating better, uh, greatly reduces chances. Also, you know, uh, dementia and, uh, it keeps our brain healthier. Exercise keeps our brain healthy. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing also, Reduce um, stress. Yeah. yeah. Um, reading it's like, that's not physical exercise, but keeps our brain healthy as we age. So you want to stay engaged physically and mentally. Mm -hmm. Like my grandmother is 97 now, mm -hmm. and I think one of her secrets to longevity, um, well, first of all, she was born in Europe and she grew up with like no McDonald's, no fast foods, obviously. Uh, she ate relatively healthy, but also what she did, um, she always read a lot of a lot of books. Mm -hmm. She likes writing poetry. And she also, also always kept positive attitude, no matter like what was going on. It seems like she always was like very giving one, mm -hmm. love, take care, you know, help other people. She was a teacher, primary school teacher. And then she worked at um, chemistry lab later on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that's one of the other big longevity secrets is attitude not being kind of too stressed out about things mm -hmm. um and keeping engaged and active yeah that brings up a good um book that i actually just remembered it was called um i believe it's called man's search for meaning loosely yeah. um it's it's a it's a pretty famous book and it's about if i remember correctly a doctor that was actually in a concentration camp during the holocaust oh yeah i know that. 
yeah. yeah, and one of his kind of takeaways from this whole situation that I think kept him going was no matter what the situation and how bad it can be, you can always control your attitude. Yeah. You know, so happiness is within you, no matter yeah. like what's and happening. And I think that that was That's one of fine. the big takeaways, or probably the biggest takeaway from the book, amongst other things, was, um, you know, always, given any situation, you know, you can always control what your attitude and your, you know, your mindset. Yeah, is. and happiness. Great, great book. If 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 people haven't read it, it's a great book. It's yeah. really not that long. Either. And that brings me to a point. Um, I recently bought book for your mom actually for her birthday uh the blue zones diet and one of the points is about because one of those blue zones is mm -hmm. japan the longest lived people yeah. if you guys haven't yeah. heard about this beautiful but it's, country too. yeah it's diet about um for people that want to kind of mimic what people eat at the longest lived areas in the world so one of them is uh, Japan, but they also have ikigai, which in their language is kind of means um, their meaning, their purpose mm. of living, like why they wake up every day, you know, so they even have like a specific word for it. Mm. So that is one of the things that um, I thought was very cool. Um, and, you know, going back to my grandmother, so mm -hmm. she was positive and then she also um never had a car you know always was using public transportation right. that means walking more yeah like uh exercise that she never actually like went to the gym gym but mm. you know she would carry heavy groceries right for, you know back and forth to the bus stop or because yeah. she you know she grew up in like this in 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 the countryside there was horses and buggies right. okay 1926. yeah that actually uh, it reminds me there's a big difference between jim strong and farm strong yeah and the biggest thing between the two is in the gym the the, the weights are often very controlled balanced you um, you're using machines or whatever the weight is very balanced where on a farm the, the weights are very unbalanced it's very awkward sometimes um, you know the the footing is not as secure as in a gym but that's interesting you know thinking about um, you know not having a car which reminds me there's a group in Burlington here called the red hot chili dippers hmm. have, you, have you heard of them no. um what they do is they jump into lake champlain every morning oh cool regardless of the temperature yeah um but one of their things that they mention is obviously it's refreshing during the the colder months when the lake is freezing but as humans we're not kind of our bodies aren't used to shock during the day right mm -hmm. you you wake up 70 in your house you know you kind of get into your car it's 68 70 you get into the office or wherever you're going you know there's not a lot of shock to the to the system obviously you don't want to shock the system too well, much. well but that's difference physical shock versus mental right. stress like yeah. we need physical stress to be healthy yeah we don't need mental stress to be healthy right. because Mental stress is the one that creates cortisol, which mm -hmm. is bad stress hormone. Mm -hmm. But the cold water plunge stress actually boosts our immune yeah. system and helps us to be healthier and feel better. And, and I've just found at the gym, mentally. you know, jumping between the hot tub and the pool, which is not very large extremes, but it's it's very refreshing. Yeah. You know, helps with uh, muscle circulation. Yeah, exactly. Recovery. Yeah. Um, and well, there is spas, you know, mm. now a lot of spas yeah, have we've been those to them. cool yeah. Yeah. Uh, ice baths mm -hmm. so you can go from hot to cold. Yeah. And then, of course, the good old snow, you know, you get into sauna and then you can go outside and roll in the snow. In the snow. Yeah. That's kind of Finland, Nor Norwegian, and like mm -hmm. in Lithuania, we had that, you know, Russian saunas. Yeah. People do that. Um, it's a good practice. And yeah. I like seeing it now being more in U.S. as well, mm -hmm. even though not all states have snow available. Mm -hmm. But yeah. here in Vermont, we have there is one spa by the 
lake that you can go outside and dip in the snow in winter time. Mm. So we still got to go check that one out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. We'll yeah. Check it out. And um, going back to the um, one more thing before we move to the next topic, like uh, my grandmother, she um, is is always uh, walked a lot mm -hmm. and um, carried groceries, mm -hmm. went to work, looked after the kids. Uh, cook the food mm -hmm. so it's like she always was so active and to this day she walks with no cane and i think that's the other yeah uh part of goes up and down stairs faster than strength. i do yeah so don't be afraid to yeah. walk and you know that that is like the best form of exercise yeah low low impact too yeah you know, walking but I think uh, the, the next thing that we wanted to talk about was protecting your skin. And I think yeah, that too. If, if anybody on here or the between the two of us can answer how to protect your skin, it's probably Yolita. Well, it will reduce your, <laughs> again, will reduce your risk of skin cancer. Mm -hmm. But also sun is um, the number one reason why we age, you know, why we get wrinkles, why we get fine lines and wrinkles on the on the skin um, so facials can really help and chemical peels that we actually also offer at brilliant massage and skin mm -hmm. um, and what what uh, what is important is to sun, to wear sunscreen which will help you to protect yourself from the UV rays yeah even um, even you know before we met I was pretty good about wearing sunscreen when I was going out cycling or going to the beach or whatever, but I never really thought about, especially in the winter, putting sunscreen on, or if you're just running between the house, the car, outside, you know, you still need sunscreen. Yes. All the time. Yeah. And um, the important thing is also like, so uh, what chemical peels do, they can reduce risk of cancer uh, because, you know, they remove, the outer skin of like that dead skin cells that as we age mm. our body cell turnover slows down mm. so the reason why we get fine lines and wrinkles is we um don't do the cell our body just don't repair dna don't do the cell turnover as fast as it does when we're young um and that's why you know the environmental factors like the sun um other free radicals pollutants they affect our our skin and um can cause pigmentation it can cause um different like um keratoses like those brown sunspots so chemical peels can help to reduce and eliminate mm -hmm. uh, even those brown spots from forming too early and or might not even form if you do uh, regular facials and there's mild, medium chemical peels you can do um, a couple times a year. It really helps. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. Um. The next thing we already touched on it a little bit was, you know, just staying mentally active, trying to keep that, I guess, the movement going in your brain. <laughs> yes. Um, and I, it's interesting that you said, you know, we, we, we need the physical activity, the cycling, the running, going to the gym, doing work outside but also that mental activity. And I never really thought about reading as kind of a mental activity. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Reading, memorizing things. Yeah. Uh, like, and like I mentioned, writing poetry. Yeah. We need to be lifelong learners. And I think that's important too, because 
you know, I've always thought about, you know, okay, at some point you're probably going to want to retire, right? <laughs> you don't want to work forever, but I'm thinking, do I really want to stop working? No, we you should know? never actually fully, it should not be the goal to yeah, ever and fully I, retire. Right, and I think it's like the goal is maybe to just take, you know, the maybe the, the, the consulting that I want, you know, keep well more of a consulting role rather than an active role or yeah well you want to stay engaged because mm -hmm. also the studies show like once people fully retire uh they're more likely to d die quicker mm. like that's the other thing right. like in those blue zones um in like sardinia greece mm -hmm. um uh, cost costa rica like people there uh they keep chopping wood mm -hmm. keep uh moving yeah. around running around yeah keep, taking the bus keep gathering yeah. the the plants outside mm -hmm. farming mm -hmm. uh helping you know living with their family so they're helping usually with like their grandkids mm -hmm. and they're staying active um they're even like running businesses, like, you know, right. maybe selling things at the market that they made or, or working painting. Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they do that in their eighties, nineties, mm -hmm. even, yeah. you know, on a small scale, of course. Yeah. When you're 90, you're not gonna work as much, but they still stay like busy throughout yeah. the day. Keeping a couple of clients, doing some consulting, doing, you know, something to keep you busy. My mom actually um said something funny it was a couple of weeks ago i can't remember who told her maybe it was her doctor or a friend and it was you know as soon as you retire and you're into retirement make sure that you have things to do to get you out of bed get you out of the house besides doctor's appointments oh my gosh yes <laughs> so you know whether that's uh you know working a very part-time job like watering the flowers at lowe's <laughs> you know yeah, um, which my, they actually offered my mom a job of <laughs> just coming in to water the flowers at Lowe's. But, you know, or finding a hobby. Yeah, maybe. finding a hobby. Like maybe. she has almost 100 orchids. I mean, it's 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 a lot. It right. sounds like excessive. But trust me, it's it's not doesn't look that much when you see it. She has like a whole green little space. And when she beautiful. loves it, you know, it's something that- But it that keeps her busy. Keeps her busy. I think she, she enjoys flowers. Just she's always enjoyed gardening and flowers. But yeah. also, um, you know, I noticed that she was emailing with someone else online about, you know, some problems she was having with some of her orchids for advice. Uh, yeah. But just something fun. You know, my dad still likes doing woodworking, he does scuba diving, um, likes to be outside. Yeah. And the funny story, like the way orchids started was from one little almost dead orchids I, mm. orchid I gave to your mom oh, yeah. from one yeah. of the tenants that moved away and left yeah. the orchid behind. And I thought that was like a lost cause orchid. Yeah. And somehow miraculously she like recovered from the dead that orchid yeah, the and same thing the... with you know the plants that are basically in the free pile at lowe's <laughs> where i'm like i would just throw that thing away and my mom's like oh no that's not that's fine i, I get that thing back you know yeah, a couple of weeks later it's expert. like oh my god that thing is back to life <laughs> but i think it's just you know trying to keep socializing maintaining a strong network of people of whatever that means some people you know it's volunteering or uh, you know, people game night, book club, uh, whatever it is to keep you, keep your mind going, sharp. keep it sharp. Yeah. Um, cause my biggest fear is like to get dementia or yeah. not be mentally there when I'm mm -hmm. older, because then like, what's the point of life? Even right. like, even if your body might still, your heart might still be healthy right. and pumping. Like, I mean, there's still point, of course, there's still point of life, right. but it won't be as good of quality if, when you have good memory, when you, you know, remember your relatives and things like that. Yeah. And just, you know, something, you know, trying to find that purpose in life. And for a lot of people, that's maybe serving other people or being active in the community. You know, that's a great yeah. thing to do when you're retired because it's, it's very, um, it's it, it's 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 meaningful work but it's also 
you know, not demanding work physically usually, but it's also very, you can kind of, you know, do it as you have time. So you're not like, oh, I got to go and do this. It's like, okay, well, you know, I've got a couple hours today, you know, I want to work on this and maybe take a couple days off, you know, to do whatever you want. Yeah. And so that brings me also, you brought up the doctors a little bit. Yeah. Um, find a good doctor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also I recommend, and I feel like everyone should be able to have one if they want to also an integrative doctor and holistic doctor mm -hmm. because you know sometimes conventional medicine they don't really pay attention to certain things like they might not do certain blood test mm -hmm. works like vitamin d you know or b12 so also have yourself or perhaps like osteopath you know mm -hmm doctor um yeah. naturopath doctor that can also take a look at your diet and how natural ways to better prevent yeah. illness um and make sure your nutrition is optimized right. like see if you need take multivitamin vitamin c uh, but quality you know i wouldn't buy anything at the conventional drugstore I make sure like um I really love Fido Multi. They're very high quality source from actual fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. compounds, organic. They're not like uh cheap, for example, B12, like cyocobalamin is usually added to a lot of things, but I can't even process that because my body doesn't methyl needs methylated B12. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those different tests, like only usually naturopaths right. and like more um, co uh, complementary and preventative mm -hmm. medicine doctors can do. Right. And these days now, even there are studios that do preventative scans and focus on right. aging. I saw New York City, uh, LA, like these bigger um, cities, towns have Our now. Longevity is what they're focusing on. Yes, yeah. uh, to like do early scans, you right. know, find cancer early, yeah. find a, a risk of stroke, of heart disease early before you actually get that stroke. You yeah, know? well, and regardless if it's a traditional doctor that's naturopath yeah. um, whichever one whatever choose, type but... of doctor or healthcare provider you have you always want to make sure that you're comfortable yes you can make sure you're comfortable yeah. you have good provider good that relationship listens to you, yeah that doesn't just want to prescribe medication for symptoms but right. actually looking okay why are you depressed right we'll give you this depression medication but maybe your vitamin d is low yeah you know like yeah. Make sure that they go the extra mile to not just sell medication because unfortunately, a lot of it can be uh, just like easy to treat the symptoms and yeah. not address the cause. What it's, you know, what we talked about before was staying active, staying healthy, finding that um, sport that you like. I think that's really important is finding a sport that you like that you can continue with you know as long as and you then can. getting a uh, massage yeah you know, stretching if you have pain you know uh, arthritis even you can get instead of pain medication you can get massage therapy mm -hmm. which helps or just finding years ago when i was at physical therapy for my for my low back and the the pt um, i forget his name and he was said you know i'm gonna give you you know, 15 or 20 different exercises. And he was like, you know, find the the three, four, five of those exercises that you really like, that feel good, and continue with those as long as you can. So I found there's three or four different kind of poses that I found that work well for me that I've tried to keep doing those. And I can tell, you know, your body is going to tell you when you're not doing your exercises. Mm -hmm. And I think it was maybe, was it like a week or so ago that, I mean, you know, we were trying to go on a walk and I was just like, my back is killing me. And that was the key that I had let it go too far without keeping up with my exercise and my stretches um, that, you know, my body was like, here's a, a shot across the bow, right? You need to keep up with your fitness because this is going to be a 24 hour thing of your back being sore and it being a little bit hard to get around. But if you don't take care of it now, it's 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 going to be it's going to be bad. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, It's easy to skip it, but then you're going to 
know the effects when you didn't do that mm -hmm. strength training, yeah. when you didn't yeah, sure. took that stretch, you didn't yeah. get that massage, you didn't do that mm -hmm. walk or swim, you know, mm -hmm. it accumulates. There is no overnight results, but no. you like you have to stay in the game doing it and then you get great cumulative a wonderful result. yeah and it's you know you can't outsmart or excuse me can't outsmart nature <laughs> can't outsmart your body can't outsmart google right you got you got to keep up with it maintain because yeah, the fact yeah. is our joints do get stiff you yep. know when we don't move um the other point i think i should mention you know this is wealth and wellness podcast brilliant wealth and wellness with big cat right big cat. Uh, so yeah but uh what we want to should mention i think what i want to mention mm -hmm. financial health is important too yeah. like you if you want to age gracefully um take care of your finances too because you know when you're older and you are stressed about money yeah that's not gonna be good for your health yeah so make sure you are putting aside some money you are uh, not just spending everything you're making young, while you're young right now because you wish you did when you'll be older. Right. Where you, you know, might not want to work as much. Well, and I know that for a lot of people, that's like, oh, that that sounds great. You know, I, I'm I, I can't. You know, I don't have any extra money. I I think Even I was hundred dollars. I always challenge yeah, people that month. you know Start really with. look at what you're spending and really kind of think about what you're spending on a daily or weekly basis. Um, you know, sometimes I'll talk with my buddies and say, hey, you know, Yolita and I went out to this this great restaurant, you know, it's new. And, you know, it, hey, it was only like 40 or $50 for both of us. And we got a bunch of food. Mm -hmm. And my buddies are like, really? And then they're like, oh, yeah, like you guys don't drink. I'm like, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. and they're like, OK, double that for us. I mean, like, we'll okay. get like, uh, you know, we will get non-alcoholic like those mocktails. Right. But where I'm but going on with rare that occasions, is, you yeah. know, OK, you can still go out, still go out and have fun because, you know, life is. Or go to places where you can bring your own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah good, good point. You know, yeah. go to hey, go to a place that is BYOB or, you know, Maybe have, if you like to drink during dinner, maybe, hey, have like a drink at home first or just don't drink in general. Or after. Yeah, or after. Or, you know, instead of getting, you know, um, a couple of cocktails, maybe get a, a beer or some wine or something. That's put that good. money aside. Yeah, and, you know, just put that few dollars aside and you'd be surprised at how quickly. Or the you know. other thing is come up with the side hustle, you know, yeah. while you're young, mm -hmm. try to make more money now, but then with the thought that, okay, I'm going to slow down when I'm yeah. 40, 50, I won't have to plow like as hard because maybe now, maybe I bought real estate investment, that cash flowing and br yeah. bringing me that extra, you know, money every month. Or, maybe, you know, I talked away some money and s p 500 yeah like in, you know, know investing yeah. in stocks mm -hmm. that has dividends or you know obviously they will grow over time yeah. and then you can use them at your retirement yeah. and um, it's very important if you're ever thinking about investments is time in the market is substantially better than timing the market and yeah. where I'm going with that is if you're waiting for a certain stock, hey, like I'm gonna buy Microsoft when it when it goes no, goes yeah. down five, <laughs> ten points. You can't time it. Yeah, maybe just you buy can. now. Yeah, maybe At you can. Some. You know, maybe you can time it a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but Vanguard actually did a very interesting study over the course, I think it was, you know, 50, 60, 75 years of history that they have in the in the market. And, you know, time in the market was almost exactly the same return if not maybe a little bit more i'd have to double check on that study than trying to time the market yeah but people you know people like us how, how are you going to time the market right no you well know? that's where the s p 500 it's yeah. like they already uh, combined mm -hmm. all these companies that they think you know is mm -hmm. doing well will be doing well so you just take off the guessing game when to yeah. buy just buy that accumulative of the best ones and you're good to go right better than any actively managed um accounts actually yeah. they perform yeah um 
and also investing in yourself to yeah. investing in your own maybe start a business now while you're young invest in your education mm -hmm. uh, you can never or in, invest in your much. health you in know? health especially too so i was at the gym yesterday and there was a a, a other you know guy there and we were just chit chatting and he was said something to the effect of you know cheap mouthwash and flossing every morning and every evening is going to save you thousands of dollars of dental work <laughs> you know down the road so it's just you know the little things that we can do right now to really invest in your health wellness financial situation is going to pay off a lot than trying to catch up because if later you on. don't have good health mm -hmm. like then nothing is good nothing is fun nothing right. is you're not um, going to want to travel if you yeah. you know have a lot of money and you know you're in poor health or you know it's difficult for you to get around you're yeah. not going to want to go I would somewhere. rather yeah. live in a cheaper smaller place and be able to afford better mostly organic food mm -hmm. than not because right. health is a priority for me personally yeah you don't want to be house poor you know you don't want to be ca car poor you want to you want to live in something or have something that is nice but also well it has to be clean and clean and healthy yeah but investing in other things you know maybe instead of having a three bedroom place you know have a two bedroom if that means that you can take care of yourself physically you better, can eat better yeah. food uh, maybe you can take a couple extra vacations because you're saving a few dollars so that you know, you can really go somewhere, unwind, eat some different food, maybe see some different people, um, et cetera. But I also think that what we wanted to also remind or talk about is, you know, things are going to change, right? We, we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So you have to kind of embrace that yeah. change. You know, and you know and you still enjoy stuff now like we're not right. saying yeah. you have to like never eat cake or never yeah. have a drink or or never do this or that it's all like 80 20 rule you know if you are good 80 percent of the time like 20 percent like one day or a couple of days a week, you can have things yeah. that, or, you know, choose healthier like options. And if you don't want to go on a 20 mile bike ride every day or a three mile run, you know, okay, do that maybe a couple of times a week. And the other times do something walking around the block a couple of times. Or, and we should have recovery time anyway. Yeah. Or instead of, hey, like, oh, let's go out to dinner, you know, okay, well, maybe let's go and get some like, you know, food from like a Whole Foods or a healthy living type deal. Yeah. And okay, maybe we'll go to the park. And you know, for dessert, in instead of eating maybe the mainstream candies, maybe make your own dessert, you yeah. know, that won't have these preservatives yeah. and or corn syrup. Find you a healthier use... dessert. Like I love apples and peanut butter or apples and, you know, cheese, you know. It's... Or you can make like no bake with yeah. oats. It's not exactly powder. what you think of as yeah. like cake and cookies, but it still kind of hits the spot of, you know, kind of having some sort of treat after dinner dried fruit yeah. and nuts it's always yeah or smoothies treat. yeah exactly and what we were talking about before and i was mentioning that book man's search for meaning is always maintaining a positive outlook right because things are going to happen right you know i always say with um you know, consulting, IT consulting, and just technology in general, especially given with, you know, cybersecurity these days is, it's not a matter of if you're going to get breached, you know, and have a cybersecurity incident, it's when. And if you have had them in the past, you're going to have them again. So it's, you know, it's knowing that there is going to be change coming. What can we do to embrace that change? It's like, we're, we're not getting any, any younger, right? Obviously. So what can we do to embrace that? Hey, we're, we age we're humans so how do we embrace that it's like well let's stay healthy let's get those positive um you know hobbies and activities in place that we can help us manage stress stay active stay focused mm -hmm. yeah and um i think those are kind of the main basic points that we really um can implement in our everyday life you know stay positive stay active read 
Yeah, do um, things for not yourself. Not just like yeah. watch, you know, movies and videos, but actual reading is good for our brain. Like it's different, different neurons are firing mm-hmm. when we read instead of when we sit in front of the TV. Because when we sit in front of TV, we're just like this passive blob, you know? Yeah. Um, or try to watch more if, you know, I like I, I really like documentaries. Like educational. Yeah, try stuff to if, if you kind of want to zone out in front of the TV. Yeah, once in a while. To relax like, instead totally of watching, um, you know, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, Yolita. No, I don't watch that. anymore. But I used to watch. Some you know, of but it. try to watch something like documentaries. You know, whether that is documentaries about like technology or uh, you know, or edu- more educational related material. Yeah, um, I know. would be interested. How does that affect the yeah, brain versus good, the reading, yeah. or anybody, versus the other? Yeah, if type. anybody has you know research on that, that'd be a good thing to leave in the comments because yeah. I'm interested about that too. And then you know, yeah. spend time with your family mm-hmm. and friends. You know, people yeah. that are isolated live shorter mm-hmm. too. People that live in the communities, people that engage with yeah. other people kids grandkids uh nephews uh parents like multi-generational mm-hmm. and also uh friends if you don't have a family if you don't have kids stay in touch with your friends and or try to find friends. extended family yeah that are don't interested. stay lonely all yeah the time. And, and your hobbies and activities um you know if you're into hiking the you know green mountain club is a great club here in in vermont that they organize hikes, um, you know, and you, with other people. And it's it's a lot more fun yeah. to hike and do activities. Yeah, but also um, have real friends, you know, yeah. try to make real friends. Like going out once in a while, that's good too. But uh, but if you can have at least a couple like good close friendships, that is really good mm-hmm. for longevity. Yeah, yeah. and I, with longevity too, it, um, you know, I was thinking about, sports and finding that sport and hobby but also to to prioritize safety too you know you don't uh, want to get injured like right. certain sports like might cripple you and might not make you yeah. age well. well and as i get older i know how much i can push my body right you know when i was younger I, it used to be you know no pain no gain and it was actually i think my mother was like you know that adjective no pain no gain is really pain is no gain you know you sometimes you know a little 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 soreness and things like that is yeah good. i mean soreness that means you're is growing but you need right. to work up you know to it yeah and you know if you're hiking say you know i like to use poles you know mountaineering poles on my descent because takes a little bit of the pressure off my knees you know yeah i didn't need to do that when i was younger but now it I, I don't care if sometimes I look fun, you know, silly or whatever with poles. But hey, I need to prioritize safety because I don't want to blow out my knees, you know, or, you know, have an accident because I know having an accident and hurting myself is going to put me out of commission for other things that I want to do. And also thinking about if your living space needs to be modified too, you know, maybe having a place that at one point, in the future, you can just, you know, live on the first floor. So you don't have to deal with going up and down stairs. Or... Yeah. Or you just, but stairs might be good for yeah. exercise, you know, <laughs> stay active. Doing some too. stairs, doing the, the But it depends stairs. to each yeah. situation, of course. Yeah. Uh, but the, the thing is, so, you know, if you live a good balanced mm-hmm. life, chances are you will live longer. Yeah. And then don't keep like grudges, don't, um, because that can affect negatively affect yeah. your mental health. Yeah. And I think also too. just keeping in mind that even though the future sounds like it's far away, it's really not. So trying to plan for the future, you know, from a fitness, financial, mental aspect of considering what we can do now even if it's a little bit to to really help with the future because before you know it you know 10 years goes by and you haven't even yeah and it's like oh my god like i'm 35 now and Mm -hmm. 
when I was 25, I thought I had all this time. And now it's like, well, I never actually thought I had this time. But like, I didn't kind of, you know, thought, okay, how it's going to be when I'm like 35. But now I'm thinking, okay, when I'm 45, now I need to do things right. to make life better for me when I'm 45, you right. know, so kind of thinking ahead. And you and you never know what's going to happen, too. So, you know, trying to plan, having you know, an emergency fund set up or some level of cushion for the future, although that might be difficult to to do when you're younger, when funds might be more limited. But as Yolita said before, trying to maybe find something that you can do on the side, even if it's just a few hours on the weekend, doing some consulting on the side. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's a, a second job that is just kind of a fun job. You know, maybe the get a couple extra dollars in your pocket, but it's just something fun. You know, maybe it's uh, a job at a coffee shop you really like and you really like enjoy talking with, you know, the people there. Yeah, or, or you know, there's yeah. many different options. Yeah. There's Tons. always ways, always options. Yep. yep. If you put your mind yeah, to it. Yeah, if you like doing woodworking or working with your hands, you know, maybe doing painting or just very light carpentry on the side for, you know, your neighbors or people in the you know, the area and who knows, maybe it'll turn into a full time contracting business. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Especially with the need yeah. right now. Yeah. So I think, you know, to to wrap this all up, right? It's to keep the physical, the mental, the emotional, the financial, all those things in mind with a good balance to keep that wealth and wellness balanced out because they go hand in hand, right? Yep. And trying to think about eat mindfully. Yeah, and don't the little, stuff empty calories. Yeah, and, and the little things that we can do now avoid negative energies. to really that are going to pay off later. And it's it kind of that what Yolita said, you know, not to eat empty calories. You know, a lot of times when you're hungry, it's maybe you're just bored or you're you're actually dehydrated. Yeah. So you know, drink some water, stay hydrated. Get a massage, get some facials. Yeah, take time for yourself. Take time for your friends. You know, a lot of times we live in this kind of hustle mentality. Of, and hopefully you can, if, you know, when you work, you enjoy what you do. Because if you work the job you hate, that will probably shorten your lifespan too. So maybe changing careers if you hate your job, it's not too late. Right. And um, that kind of reminds me of... Uh, um, you know, when I was at um, a, a technology conference in August and one of the speakers was talking about, you know, IT incident response for, um, you know, cybersecurity. But one thing that he was saying is, you know, we can't let poor managers kind of get away with it, so to speak. And where he was going with that is if you have a poor manager, you're not happy with your boss or your job is, you know, it, it's not worth it you know, get your affairs in order and, you know, move to another another organization where you are appreciated, where you have a better work-life balance, where you're not stressed. Yeah, or even if you don't like where you live, you can move as well Yeah, to a better, more yeah. peaceful, more cleaner. Yeah, you always space. have options, you know, you always have options. So keep in mind that you're, you know, there's a financial aspect to that as well, but also a uh, a mental aspect which might outweigh the financial aspect yeah by a lot so yeah well uh thanks everyone yeah. for tuning in and this is what five yeah wow. and by the way like if you That's a lot by the way we are gonna be offering soon brilliant massage and skin, skin franchise so mm. you could run this wellness business yourself mm, too if you're interested. interested yeah we'll so. have to keep i think we talked about that a couple yeah, episodes we did, before but we'll right so maybe on the next one yeah soon. we'll do maybe a little bit more of a an update on and that. also i'll be reporting on my preventative pernuvo scan so stay mm, tuned for that interesting, interesting okay live studio audience <laughs> imaginary live studio yeah, close enough right yeah um, great. All right. Episode five. Stay tuned for episode six. Please subscribe and see you next one.